Hey everyone, this is Rachelle. Thanks for clicking on my video. I came in today to do a review of tonight's episode of Love and Hip Hop. I don't normally do these reviews and I actually said that I would not do them. But we're nearing the reunion show and there's a lot going on um, with this cast. So I might do the last few sh um, shows before the reunion. I'm not even exactly sure how many shows that we have left, but it's getting a little interesting. And um, tonight's episode was was interesting to me. So let's just get to it. So it started off with Stevie J in California. He's saying that he's there for business. He's walking around. He takes his shirt off. And this show is so phony um, and just staged and badly acted that there um, in California were Carly Red, Mimi, Tierra, Jessica Dime, and they all end up at a comedy show for Tony Rock. And he basically puts them in the show. He talks about how him and Carly go way back. And then he, you know, when Stevie J and um, Jessica Dime walked in, he said hi to them and basically like just integrated them into his show. Um, the next scene that they have is between Mama D and Young Jock. They basically sit down and Mama D is asking Young Jock to help her with her music. I do not know what this lady is doing. She is a little bit younger than me and um, out here trying to be some type of, I guess, rapper. It, it's just, this is just crazy. This lady needs to go somewhere and sit her crazy ass down. But anyway, she asked him to help her with her music. Young Jock, you know, he said this is family. He loves her. But he has to, you know, break it down to her. Look, you are an older woman. I mean, you're not going to be out there like Beyonce or, uh, you know, any of these young rappers or singers out here today. We're going to have to think of something else for you. So he comes up with this plan, which I think is a pretty good plan for the old broad, is he tells her that she needs to get something like a 2016 electric so slide, uh, like a call and response song. You know, I'm talking about, you know, I guess women's issues, but put it in the form of something fun that people can dance to. In this meeting, Mama D tells Young Jack about her putting this tracking on Ernest's phone. She tells him that if she finds out that Ernest is up to anything, that she is going to fuck him up. And you know what? I think Ernest better be wary. This bitch is crazy. And I don't think she's joking when she says that if she finds out that he's doing something, she is going to fuck him up. But um, she also tells uh, young Jack that if when she does, just say while she's fucking up, fucking him up, how she's going to slice and dice his balls. This woman, man, she is just funny by herself this woman trips me out so much she goes to the extreme on this show i wonder if she liked this in real life because it's it's like um she takes a a real situation and then just goes crazy with it you know women every day we some of us do crazy things you know track down our man but this woman in her palace and the subjects and the king and the princess and all this stuff she just strips me out the next scene is uh rashida and kurt they're at this new house that they built and they're talking about their fake ass recording studio i don't know who where what artist this is that they're recording because i know that i'm older but i haven't heard anything that was a d-low production here in the last two or three years you would think with all of this publicity and exposure they're getting on love and hip-hop that artists you know with this 
this uh, D-Lo Productions artist would be popping and jumping off the screen. They would have produced several, um, and I haven't heard of of anything that they've done. And they need to quit with all this. We'll see, you know, who comes from D-Lo Production. But while they're there, in walks Kurt's daughter, Kelsey, and. Um, she is a little hot firecracker with a smart mouth and she would be checked if she was one of mine. Uh, this little broad is something else. Um, she talks to them about, um, you know, whether they're going to record her or sign her. And they were basically, you know, kind of letting her down easy. Um, she talks about now that they have this house, can she live in one of the other houses? And they let her know, no. Um, we have this new artist that we're bringing in, and basically she's going to be um, living in the house. This little bitch again, you know, just basically tells them, look, um, you don't seem like you want me, blah, blah, blah. And then she makes this dramatic exit. They needed to check her when she was younger because she has a smart mouth and a very sassy personality that I would not be dealing with. Um, I don't know if they're not checking her hard because they're on the show or is this some skit or something that Mona has cooked up to have her play this bratty daughter. But after a while, it gets to be annoying. Then the next scene that they had was with Betty Ilo and D and CeeLo Green. And... um. D, I can't think of the, the transgender guy's woman's full name right now, so I'm just going to refer to him, her, as D. Um, they go in to see uh, CeeLo Green. You know, we got this old bubbly, crazy Betty Idol um, just pumping up D um, to CeeLo, and D wants CeeLo to listen to her new song. So they play it, and... He pretends like he likes it because to me, it sounded like a bunch of confusion. I didn't even really know what was going on. The beat was kind of jerky and it to me, it wasn't catchy. And I don't know why CeeLo Green was sitting there pretending like it was, but he seems to like it. And, you know, it's kind of up on working with um, D. So I guess so, whatever. Um, he talks about her, you know, she can write, write, produce, sing and all that. And he's, he's up for it. So I guess this is going to be a good fit again with love and hip hop. We will see because they, they show all this stuff on screen, but we never really see it come into fruition. We're just watching and really none of this stuff really happens. The next scene is with Stevie J and Faith Evans and they sit down, they're happy to see each other. And basically Faith is asking him, you know, what's going on with you lately? Um, you know, they go a long way back. So Stevie feels comfortable discussing some of the things that are going on with him and that crazy ass Jocelyn. Um, Stevie J basically tells Faith about the picture that Jocelyn had, you know, with Rick Ross, uh, with him, you know, touching her just a little bit inappropriately and how he didn't appreciate it. And he felt like Jocelyn was disrespecting him. And he also dropped on Faith that they really were not married, which everybody knew they weren't. Faith, Faith knew he wasn't married to her. I don't know why they kept this marriage thing going. It was just like really stupid after a while. Um, but they ran with it and this is, you know, become like a major thing in the show. Um, so basically Faith, you know, is telling him to get it together. You know, she, she's with him, you know, she's his friend. So I guess, um, he felt comfortable. They had a little conversation and that was the end of that. And the next scene was with Ernest and Miss Charlene. They sit down to discuss this. This shit is funny. <laughs> Whoo. Okay, y'all. Mm -mm. <laughs> Hold on, because you know Mama D crazy, crazy. So this is a little funny. So let me chat it back up and not laugh. I told y'all. 
I have a sick sense of humor, so even thinking about this scene <laughs> got me laughing. Okay, hold on, y'all. All right, I'm straight. I'm not gonna laugh. I'm not gonna laugh. Okay, so Ernest, I'm being, I'm trying to be, um, not laugh. Ernest sits down with his poor self because we know that Mama D in, pre in a couple scenes back said she was going to slice and dice his fucking balls. He is out sitting out with Miss Shirley. He done met with her for coffee and they just discussing this crazy bitch. And he's telling her, you know, I'm working three jobs. Uh, you know, I know my sex ain't right. Um, things just ain't right with us. And, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I don't know what to do. And Miss Serlene, with her uh, online psychology, psychology degree, is there to give him some pointers and just be supportive and help the brother out. And then through the window, who should we see hopping in? As, what did y'all say she doing hopscotch her ass is hopping in here comes mama d Ernest is in the middle of a sentence he stops i know this man's blood frozen his fucking veins when he saw that crazy bitch um mama d said wait a minute wait a minute motherfucker what are you doing here with this bitch and um Charlene said back it up ho i am not here trying to screw your man ain't nothing going on this is innocent you know i'm just here to be supportive and offer him some you know some advice on the relationship don't get it twisted mamba d you know basically looks at Ernest and you know tells Charlene, look i'm talking to my man right now so, uh, you know, Ernest tells her, baby, look, ain't nothing going on. This this woman is here, you know, all, trying to help me. I needed somebody to talk to. And it ain't about, um, you know, what you think it is. So Mama D, she turns to Miss Charlene and then she starts pleading her case. Basically telling Miss Charlene everything that's going on in their relationship and how if Ernest don't get his shit together, that you know paying bills more than one you know contributing more and i guess getting his sex together that this gravy train called mama d is gonna pull into the station and drop him off <laughs> that shit was funny i was like what if miss shirley i mean uh mama d come in hobble her ass on over there with on them crutches and bust miss shirley in the back of the fucking head but because look you got to think when mama d came in she just saw the back of a bitch with her man sitting up there. Now, she done tracked this motherfucker like the FBI, CIA. Now, what if she done hobbled up to that table and bust poor Miss Shirley in the head and she didn't know what the fuck was going on? So that, that whole scene worked out good. But I'm telling you, y'all, it had the potential to be like a funny scene. These old folks get in a fight in the coffee shop. That shit would have been funny. So just moving on. Stevie J and Jocelyn, these motherfuckers, ain't y'all tired of them and this shit? And this bitch, Jocelyn, still referring to Stevie J as her husband when the cat is out the bag, the man is not her husband. Stevie J basically checks her about the picture that she he saw of her and Rick Ross and just told her, look, bitch, I have put you on game. I found your ass. You know, he didn't say this, but you know this is what he was thinking. Bitch, you was just stripping a couple years ago. Didn't nobody even know your name. I put you on game, and now you out here disrespecting me with all this shit that you're doing. Going around telling me, me that I got all these other babies and just starting shit. Basically, he said, you know, get your shit together. Um, Jocelyn is... Um, you know, it's basically saying, you know, I got him wrapped around my finger that um, she basically is in control now. They decide to hug it out. Stevie J said he's a lover, not a fighter. And they decide to hug it out and, you know, go on. Um, he told her also while he was there that she owed him an apology and Jocelyn is not on it. She is not... Um, you know, going to apologize for that because she didn't feel like she did anything wrong. 
Um, he said that he missed her crazy monkey sex. He missed her walking around naked and her perfume and all this shit. So, you know, again, like I said, they hug it out. And, um, you know, she says that she is going to treat him to something. And then in walks Tommy. You know, Jocelyn and Stevie J, their whole thing is sex, sex, sex more sex crazy sex monkey sex sex so in walks this crazy ass tommy she got her have her motherfucking ass hanging out this bitch it's just tommy is a cute girl and it's and tommy knows that she is and she walks in sits her ass down with her ass cheeks all out and they get to talking, you know, Stevie J is shocked that she's there and this whole little scene plays out with them. Um, Jocelyn tells Stevie J to come on and bring his big dick on. Child, they are funny. Bring his big dick on into the room and handle both of them will, you know, treat Tommy to something. Now Stevie J say he's not on it because this is his nephew's woman and he's not gonna this time. You know, now we know he done indulged in some other times, but this time he's not gonna indulge. Jocelyn and Tommy proceed to finish stripping off what little clothes they had on and they get in the pool and they tell Stevie J to um, come on in and Stevie J is saying no I'm not gonna get into this even though we know he was fighting Stevie J had to pull everything he had not to jump in that pool strip his clothes off and jump in that pool with them y'all know he wanted to get in um, he uh, basically was fighting because he knows that this is going to be shown but hadn't it been shown stevie j would have obliged tommy and went down on her him and jocelyn probably um would have both done it to her she, tommy probably would have been served up that night and they would have just all had this little good time these people are a bunch of freaks they are a bunch of freaks and tommy is really flirty and sexual so you know i'm surprised um nothing didn't go down between them but just that threesome right there i don't know you know you know we now know that it's been a lot of stuff between these three but we're gonna see all this play out if tommy can come to the reunion we'll, we'll see all this play out there at the reunion so the next scene we are back with Rashida and she's at her store press with her mom and she's telling her about um, you know everything that happened with Kelsey and her little attitude and how she's like pissed because they won't sign her again this little bitch is something else she should have been checked years ago and she wouldn't have this little spoiled brat attitude mama D tells um, Rashida about the little incident with Mama D. I I'm sorry, Shirlene tells Rashida about the little incident with Mama D and Ernest and how all that crazy scene played out with Mama D tracking him down and, and all that. And then in walks Kurt and his new artist or their new artist. And he basically tells um, Kelsey that this new artist is going to be living in the house and she's also going to be working at press now this pushes kelsey over the edge she said that this girl is taking the life that she wanted and basically they're pushing her out so again she makes this grand exit um getting mad and just walking out so i guess that's the end of that with her and i don't blame them because she sounds like Minnie Mouse you can't even take her rapping seriously now she has the look but that voice just is not happening and I agree with them and then also I wouldn't sign her because she has this little entitled attitude like you know this is my father you have this uh this pretend production company of course you will hire me so i would not sign her just because she thinks that she should be signed that whole situation with them is phony anyway because again 
what artists um, are Rashida and Kurt working with right now? I, I just can't be bothered with them. And then this uh, last scene is Carly and Life Jennings. Um, Life Jennings sits down with Carly, basically tells her, I've been seeing all this stuff and hearing about all this stuff about you and Scrap De Leon, and he wants to know what the hell is going on. Carly tells him, hey, look, you know, basically she's saying like he wasn't paying attention to her. Um, she tells this lie about a flat that she had and her being drunk and he rented a hotel room from, for her and blah, blah, blah. Because we know Carly is, you know, is lying. You know, according to the show, her and Scrap had a little thing going on. Now she tells life that, um, Scrap is in jail and he's doing 20 years where, well, we all know that he's only really doing five. Then this dramatic scene happens where life pulls out this ring and Carly falls on the, on the ground like she's fainted. Wasn't that shit phony? I was sitting there like, bitch, get up. Bitch, get up. You know damn well all this was staged. I mean, she could have done it a little better but this way she like passed out on the floor on the ground i i just kidding i this show is getting so damn staged and the scenes are not more natural i mean if they would have kept it like it was but all this extra child please now when they were showing the reviews from next week's show where everything starts to come to a head again i don't know how many more um shows we have in the season but it looks like this next show is going to be real good this next episode because it's going to kind of leave kind of like all the little the little um uh, things that we have going on now they're going to come to a head so it should be good next week and if i feel like it if it's if it's something exciting, because I, I said I was not going to do these reality show reviews, but because of all the stuff that's going on behind the scenes with Love and Hip Hop and Tommy and Jocelyn, you know, having sex. Did y'all see my video um, before? You know, they said that, uh, what is it, Tommy admitted that her and um, Jocelyn did have relations. And then did y'all see that video, uh, my previous video where I put a link in of Jocelyn at the strip club lipping and laughing just go back and look at it jocelyn is a nasty and nasty freaking woman but you know what thanks for watching this review i don't know how i did this is the first time i did one of these but tonight was one of those ones that i wanted to review so hope you guys had a happy fourth I did okay. Um, I don't know if you've been watching my videos. I have been dealing with serious spine issues and I have been damn near bedridden for the last two weeks and I was doing my videos off screen. And today I didn't cook a damn thing. I have a son that brought his mama over a plate. So I was posted up with my food that my baby bought me and then I was sitting here just watching television and I said you know what I, I'm gonna try to do a review so I hope I did okay hope I didn't miss anything if I did put it down in the comment section you guys enjoy the rest of your evening and thanks for rolling with me on this review bye bye now